what are the, the main beliefs that you've, you've changed in that time where you, you realize that maybe what you um, thought you could do when you were 20 or 30, that maybe isn't the smartest option now, uh, or some of those things where you were, you've completely switched stances. I mean, I know with my, with my coaching, uh, with my swimming, there's been a few things where I've, I've had my eyes open to what I originally thought when I started. Is there any, uh, anything that stands out to you there? Yeah, I think, um, I mean, you've got to, I mean, you've got to realize your limitations as your age, right? Because, you know, I kept pushing as hard as I could, you know, as long as I could. And, you know, I got to the point where I was just rolling between injuries, right? So, you know, my, my whole sort of training and, um, you know, athletic, you know, uh, you know, platform and, um, you know, the comp- competitions that I was entering, they were basically structured around whether I was healthy or whether I was injured. And as you get older and older, um, you just got to realize that, you know, you've just got to step it back a bit. I mean, I, I, competed, I competed in competitive Spartan racing up until about three years ago. Uh, and I was, you know, to that point, just really just racing between injuries because, you know, it was a, you know, it was a, a heavy, both endurance, uh, you know, high intensity, sort of strength-based exercise program with a lot of exercises, which not necessarily sort of uh, conducive to health as you age, you know, a lot of squats, a lot of heavy, heavy lifting and twists. I mean, I was continuously just putting myself out of the game just through sort of the exercise regime that I was undertaking. So at some point, you've just got to say, like, some things you've just got to, like, stop and realize that that's, um, that's not con- – Conducive to a sort of a long-term sustainable health program. Um, so for me, that was, um, you know, when you look at specifics, it was a lot of like squat work. Um, there's a lot of evidence around, um, you know, squats as you age in terms of barbell squats, in terms of, you know, um, in terms of the impact on that as you age. You know, I do a lot of kettlebell squats just in terms of goblet squats and I've sort of, um, sort of mixed that up a little bit. But you can still continue to get the same sort of strength benefit, but um, sort of, you know, using different machines and the like. So, you know, I've changed that whole strength regime. Um, nutritionally, you know, we all, you know, you just eat whatever we want, right? We, you know, we're bulletproof. You know, so, you know, now I eat a you know, very high proportion of fats because, you know, from the point of view of brain health and, and sexual health and maintaining your testosterone, fats are a huge component of that. Um, I eat a small amount of carbs, but I have to balance that in terms of the endurance work that I'm doing around, um, you know, specifically the triathlon training that I'm doing at the moment. Um, and I eat a higher proportion of protein um, uh, now than I did in the past because, you know, once you hit like 30 is the age, but really once you hit about 40, 45, your body really starts to um, break down your muscle mass. So you need to eat a high proportion of protein uh, per kilogram or pound of body weight um, and then supplement that obviously with, you know, higher sort of you know load strength work so um less less um in terms of um volume in terms of strength work but more in terms of intensity higher um, heavier weights as you age pretty much as heavy as you can lift um as you age in terms of maintaining muscle mass but um but less volume in terms of a weekly basis so you know you don't do weights every day so i break my sort of training range scheme up into sort of endurance, uh, tempo, um, high intensity training and strength, strength work. And I kind of mix, uh, that up on a week, um, on a weekly basis. Um, and that's kind of where I focus. 